The first step in establishing a native wildflower garden is to kill the grass or weeds. You can do this by simply covering the area of your future garden with thick black plastic. If you do this during the summer, it will take two to three months to kill the grass and weeds. But if you start this process in the winter, you'll need to have this area covered for about six months. You can simply use landscape staples to secure the plastic to the ground and to keep the wind from blowing it away. After your plastic has been down for either two to three months in the summer or up to six months in the winter, then it's time to remove the plastic and till the area. Next, you'll want to take a rake and remove any large rocks or pieces of root from the tilled area. The next step in establishing your native wildflower garden is to plant the plants. I like to use plugs because plugs, once you get them into the ground, they will grow much quicker than seed. If you have a fairly small area, using plugs is the way to go. You'll have quicker results than seed. However, if you have a large area that you're trying to establish with native wildflowers, then you'll want to use seed because it would be too expensive to try to put plugs in a very large area. I do want to show you some mature plants that started out as plugs about three years ago in this garden here at the Burr Oak Nature Center. Right back here, you can see these beautiful dark purple flowers, our New England Aster. They're, in, they're a fall bloomer, so they're blooming right now. These seed heads are from um, Monarda or wild bergamot. And I've also got some butterfly milkweed here that has gone to seed. When this was blooming, it was a bright orange colored flower. There are also a few others down here. Some common milkweed, and of course the common milkweed and the butterfly milkweed are both great monarch butterfly plants. And we have some liatris, which is blazing star that's in seed, as well as some purple cone flower. I do want to mention that you should leave your wild native plants up with their seed heads all winter long. They are great sources of food for birds and there are some species of butterflies and moths that overwinter within a garden like this so it's important to leave those be for the winter time. Native plants of course are so important. They provide nectar and pollen for butterflies, moths, honeybees, bumblebees, wasps, ants, beetles, just a whole plethora of wildlife use native plants. It's helpful to space out your plants where you think you'd like to plant them before you put them into the ground. Once you have your plants in the ground, it's time to water. The amount that you water depends on what type of soil that you have. If you have sandy soil, you'll have to water more frequently than clay type soils. Clay soils hold the moisture longer. Also, the season will also dictate how much you have to water. We're watering these plants in the fall and you don't have to water as frequently in the fall because you don't have the high temperatures of summer. 
in the summertime, you'll definitely want to water more frequently and you should water between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. to help eliminate evaporation that can happen during the heat of the day. Basically, what you should do is check the soil. If the soil is dry, then it's time to water. All right, you've got your plants in the ground and you've watered them, so now it's time to add some mulch. Mulch helps these plants retain the moisture around their roots. So you're gonna put your mulch on and it's important that you leave about two inches around the plant so that water can still make its way down to the roots of this newly transplanted plant. So you'll leave about a two inch diameter just like that. Again, so when you continue to water these transplants, they'll still get lots of water and the mulch won't block the water from entering that root system. The last step is to put up a fence to keep the deer from eating your brand new plants. Here is the deer fence completed. It's now the spring season and I'm anxious to see how my plants will do during this upcoming spring and summer growing season. I hope these steps help you establish a native wildflower garden at home and then you can attract pollinators and other wildlife like birds. Thanks for joining us today.